Hey everyone, welcome back to Reading with Tatiana. I'm finally in my new place, so I'm excited to film and also get back on a more regular reading schedule. So today the book I just finished and reviewing is called Still Alice by Lisa Genova, and I gave this book a 5 out of 5. As always, before I go into the review, I would appreciate if you hit the subscribe button, if you gave this video a thumbs up, and also leave a comment if you've read this book or have any feedback for my channel or any recommendations for me to read in the future. A new segment I want to add to my booktube reviews is doing booktuber shout outs. And this idea came to me by a booktuber called Luminous Libro, who I will link her channel down below. And you know, what she said kind of resonated with me that this community is very uplifting and positive. It doesn't cost me anything to give a shout out to someone. And it also may help you watching it to find a booktuber that may resonate with you. It will also help you find other books to read. And I think like, yeah, it's great. So why not do it? So my first booktuber shout out is Loomis Libro for planting this idea. So thanks for doing that. My second book to the show is Kathy Treehart, who I will also link down below. Uh, she came across my book to feed because uh, I joined a Facebook group, which I think she created or at least organizes right now. And every week she does a, uh, a, a I guess, a round call of all the people who have made booktube videos and she would create a playlist for us to watch and support each other. She also has really great content and covers topics like the LGBTQ community, which I think is not, um, not talked about enough. So I really appreciate all the book reviews that she does and I found really interesting uh, TBRs from her channel. My third booktuber shout out is Marka the Bibliophist, who I will also uh, link down below. I came across her channel when I first started my booktube as well and she covers a lot, a lot of young adult uh, fiction as well as fantasy. I really like her channel because she kind of is a new booktuber like me. I mean her seem to um, comment a lot, a lot on each other's videos. Uh, I also like her content. I like the way she films. So yeah, if you have time, check out her channel as well. Okay, so now let's get into the um, my book review for Still Alice by Lisa Genova. As always, I like to start talking about the author, uh, Lisa Genova. She is a neurologist, she is an author, obviously, and she also identifies as a uh, professional speaker, mom, yogi, and an empathy warrior. She has a few TED Talks, so if you're interested, you can like look her up on YouTube. She has, since her books, uh, she's now published several books. She is now a professional speaker on Alzheimer's, which, which I think is really cool. And Still Alice was actually her first book she ever published. And it's interesting because when this book came out, she actually self-published it because I, I interpret as she seemed it to be a story that needed to be told and she didn't want to wait around to find a publisher to publish it. So I thought it was like super neat that she did it herself. And the book, obviously, I gave it a 505, has a good story that needs to be told and needs to be shared. So two years after she self-published it, um, it actually got picked up. And eventually in 2014, it actually even got a movie adaptation with Julianne Moore. And I actually watched this movie when it came out a few years ago. And it's honestly like a great movie. Julianne Moore's in it. Alec Baldwin is in it. Kristen Stewart is in it. And I think that year, or sorry, I know that year, Julianne Moore actually won Best Actress at the Oscars for her portrayal of Alice in this novel. So this story is great. And yeah, so that's a little bit about the novel as well as the author, Lisa. I also want to talk about her other books she's written. Since Still Alice, she's written tons of books, uh, but I've added three of them to my Goodreads to read. So a lot, all of her books will cover different types of neuro neurological diseases. Um, it does seem that she's most well-spoken in Alzheimer's because since uh, being an author, she actually, like I said before, she speaks professionally uh, at TED Talks and that kind of stuff, conferences about Alzheimer's. But her other three novels I want to read is one of them is called Left Neglected, which is about a woman who suffers a traumatic brain injury and talks about how she deals with life after that injury and accident. So I think that will be very good to read because I feel like that could happen to any of us at any time. So that one is called Left Neglected. The second book I want to read by, by her is called Love, Anthony, which is about a non-verbal boy who has autism. And as you see my channel a few books ago, I read about 
um, The Curious Incident of Dog at Midnight, which is a story that was told from a boy who has autism's point of view. So it would be very interesting to read Lisa's uh, Love Anthony novel and see how she portray the perspective of an autistic uh, boy, especially someone who's nonverbal. So I assume the book is all about internal dialogue, or maybe it's told from a third person's point of view. Um, the third book I want to read is called uh, Inside the O'Briens, which actually covers a family where they have the genetic uh, uh, disposition for Huntington's disease. So I think it's really uh, a neat coverage because it's not just one main character like Alice or the boy who has autism or the woman who got a brain injury, but inside the, inside the O'Briens will cover a whole family, which I assume will have different generation of people who are suffering or have fear or they're expecting to suffer from Huntington, Huntington, um, Huntington disease. So I think that'll be really cool to read that story as well. I usually like to follow a bit of personal information about the author, but for Lisa Genova, I couldn't find too much, except that she had a daughter that was born in the 2000s, and she started full-time writing in 2004 following her divorce. Uh, not a lot of fun facts there, but that was the two personal facts that I could find, so I felt I want to share them. Now I'll talk a bit about the book Still Alice and the premise of it. So when I saw this movie a few years ago, I was really moved by a movie and I thought this book is actually a story of someone called Alice who suffered from early onset Alzheimer's. Uh, upon reading the book and also reading a bit about it after, it's actually an amalgamation of all these people who Lisa has worked with or have exposure to with Alzheimer's at different stages and early onset Alzheimer's. So Alice is actually a fictional character. Um, she has an amalgamation though of lots of real experiences. And the character, um, she is a cognitive professor at Harvard University. She's very successful in her career. She travels, she you know, does conferences, she does lectures and speeches about her, per, about her um, I guess her specific um, research around cognitive psychology. Uh, her husband is also a scientist, I believe, at Harvard, and he specializes in cancer research. Um, they're both very uh, like successful in their in fields, and they also publish a book together. And the reason why I'm sharing all these details is it kind of sets the space, I guess, for how detrimental Alzheimer's is for her career and also her relationship with her husband, because one thing Alice said was that when she got diagnosed, she was so scared of losing her husband because he fell in love with her because of her brain and her intellect. So the story starts with setting the premise of who she is and her life and she starts noticing that she forgets simple things and I think she's in her early 50s so it's very you know not shocking to forget things here or there. She's a busy person, she teaches, she does talks, she travels, uh, she has three grown, three grown adult kids. So it's not a big deal at first but then one day she goes for a run and she realizes that she recognizes all the stores, she can read all the signs, and she knows the area, but she can't really put together how to get home. And that was really jarring for her because she's lived there for 20 plus years with her husband. She works in the area, uh, her livelihood is in the area, and she, she runs every day the same-ish route. So how could she understand and read everything around her, but she couldn't figure out how to get home when it was really just a mile away? Um, and because she's in her 50s, she was also at first thinking like, oh, maybe I'm having menopause, maybe it's a side effect of menopause, which it is in some extreme cases of menopause. So she mo goes to a doctor, she gets diagnosed, and unfortunately, there is no um, mistake that she has early onset Alzheimer's. So the novel kind of covers um, two, just under two years of Alice's life from a diagnosis until the two years. It just shows her decay of her mind and also how horrific early onset dementia is, is on her um, as an individual, her identity, uh, on her relationship with her husband, uh, her relationship with her three adult children changes, and also it really affects her career as Harvard, as you can imagine that it's hard to teach when you don't really remember uh, going from one slide to the next. So overall, this book was really heartbreaking. There are like tiny moments of things that make you happy, or it's heartwarming, but overall, like you know how it's gonna end, and it's just a really sad book, but you know, it's really worth reading. Now I'll go over the characters. So obviously, um, the first character is Alice. Uh, I've already talked about her a lot in the, uh, the setting of the book, but I love how the author, Lisa, did a really good job describing 
um, Alice's internal thought process and the book does a really good job that when you're reading it it's from her point of view so like you know there'll be a paragraph and then a few paragraphs later it'll be the same paragraph and like oh wait did that just happen and it did so I think Lisa did a really good job sharing Alice's confusion and forgetfulness um, and I feel like she's really raw about her reaction to Alzheimer's like during the book she talks about how she'd rather have cancer because at least with cancer you can treat it um, or she um, thinks about ending her life so I really think Lisa is a very as a character you really empathize with and she's so young and she's so successful and it's just like really awful what is happening to her. The next character I want to talk about is Alice's husband John. Um, I really struggle with him because there's a conflict in the book where he has to pick between his career and his wife and you know for me it's so obvious that if my partner had Alzheimer's and you know it's only going to get worse and worse if I could take a year off of work to spend it with him why wouldn't I? I would not think that it's delaying my life at all because this is the one chance I have to spend whatever precious time I have with my partner. But you know, having said that, I try to put myself in John, the husband's shoes, and you know, he has a very successful career in cancer research, and this could be a once in a lifetime opportunity. And you know, if he feels that his wife is gonna go downhill anyways, then why does it matter? So I really struggle with him, but I think that's the point of his character, and I really like how Lisa made him so that he's not perfect, and sometimes he's not the best, and you know, he's struggling too because he's his own person. And just because his wife has Alzheimer's doesn't mean he would put his life on hold for her. Um, but it's just hard for me to relate to personally because I feel like I would do that for my partner. The last three characters I want to share that I think are important to share are her three adult children. Their names are Tom, Anna, and Lydia. Uh, so with early onset Alzheimer's, you can actually get tested to see if you will carry the gene. and. I think now technology has now advanced so you can know for sure if you will get it or not. And then um, you can also mitigate it that if you have it, that when you have kids, that your kids won't get it. So I think that's like super cool that technology has come so far. So her three kids, uh, two of them do want to get tested, uh, Tom and Anna. Um, Tom doesn't have it, so he's scot-free. Anna does have it, which is really scary because she, in the book she's actually trying to have kids. But fortunately, be, uh, she has twins and she's able to mitigate that um, outcome for her kids, but it's kind of sad because she knows it's going to happen to her. And then um, Alice's third child, Lydia, chooses to not get tested because she rather just not know what her future is. And the book is really cool because she has three very different relationships with her children. And when the book started, her and Lydia uh, have a very, to not, not toxic, but tumultuous relationship. And during the book with Alzheimer's, they actually start getting along and start having more honest conversations that are less judgy because, you know, they don't have time to be rude or have time um, to judge or have concerns. So it's kind of nice to see how the silver lining with Alzheimer's, it was able to repair her relationship with her daughter. Um, but it's quite sad at the end because with Lyd Lydia, she is the first daughter that she kind of forgets who she is, but she still feels this drawn and drawn comfortness and warmness to her. So it's really cool to see that little tiniest silver lining in Alzheimer's. So common themes I got from this novel is the first one is how precious and quite quick life is. Like Alzheimer doesn't just affect dumb people, which is the stigma. I feel it's kind of let gone now. It doesn't affect people who don't use their brain. It can affect anyone. Like in this book, Alice is a professor. She uses her brain every day. She lectures and studies and researches and it still hit her out of nowhere. So it's really sad to see. So this book really, you know, reaffirmed that life is precious. Enjoy what you can. Don't take things for granted. Um, and yeah, like your life could just change just like that and you have no control of it and it's really scary. Um, one thing that really surprised me was how quickly she, uh, Alice lost her physical ability. And one thing that was surprising to me was that she, with Alzheimer's, sometimes you would see something, but your brain can't translate it. So you can't like lift your feet fast enough or you can't able to process what you're seeing. So in the book, um, Alice wants to leave her house, but she has like a um, like a carpet runner that goes from guess her hallway to her door, but the carpet runner is black. And in her Alzheimer's state, she thought it was a black hole that like was open to a basement. And she's like, oh, I can't get out. I guess there must be some maintenance going on. But you know, 
later on when she looks at a game because her daughter walked on the black hole she's like oh my god it's a rug and she's so frustrated and upset and like the struggle she has is just so painful and it makes you really think like oh like that could happen to me and like when it does or if it does it's so out of her control and hopeless and it's really I know sad and scary to read the second common theme in this book that I kind of picked up on was the um, idea of identity and what that means because before her diagnosis she saw herself as a academic someone that was in her field that you know did this research and a professor and all that kind of stuff but with Alzheimer's she had to learn like what's her identity is she a mom does she know who she is what happens if she forget who she is because at the end of the book she looks in the mirror and she doesn't understand how this person that she's looking at is so old because maybe she remembers herself as really young. So it's just interesting to kind of think about how you see yourself as your identity. Do you see yourself as, like for me, I'm a daughter, I'm a partner, I am an associate, I am a friend. But it really depends, I guess, on like where I am and who I'm with. But like, you know, if you take away everything else, who am I as a person when there's nothing to distract me or no society to be in? So. I just need to talk about that and just think about what really matters to you when shit hits the fan, basically. And with that theme, that kind of ties on to my last theme. So I talked about identity, which kind of like weaves into it as Alice's Alzheimer's starts to decay in her mind and her well-being, is that it's so important to have the community around you. In this case, obviously, she had her family, her husband, and her three kids. But, you know, if you don't have a family or you don't have a partner, which is obviously totally fine, uh, you can have your friends or you can have groups that you're part of and how it's really important to have this because as you get older, there's nothing guaranteed in life. And as you decay physically or mentally, who's going to be there for you? And you know, what you give is what you get when it comes to friendship and relationships. So this book really makes me think about that and just seeing her kids talking to her husband about who's going to take care of her when she's older, uh, how to keep your career ahead of your wife and that kind of stuff. So I really like the discussion on the and on that topic. Now I'm going to share things I didn't like about this book. Uh, I gave this book a 5 out of 5, so it was really hard for me to find something I didn't like. But if I have to say one thing I didn't like about the book was um, there's a part of it where Alice shares her going to a doctor, which she goes to every few months for a checkup. And the doctor performs a series of diagnostic tests to see how her memory is deteriorating. And so I don't remember now, but the address basically is like John Black, 42 West, something, something, some town. And then in the novel, Alice talks about how after the doctors gives her that address, he goes through a series of other tests, like, you know, make her like walk across the room or make her spell water backwards or make her touch her nose with her left hand and that kind of stuff. At the end of this whole series of exercises, the doctor will then ask Alice to repeat the address that he gave her at the beginning of the session. And, you know, as the book progressed, she obviously forgets more and more and more. And for me, when I read it, I was like, oh my god, it was only a few paragraphs ago and I already forgot it. So that was really something I didn't like because I'm like, oh my god, where's my memory going? But I know, obviously, it's that's normal and it's not a big deal. And obviously, if I was doing a test with a doctor, I would be probably more serious and more focused. But, like, you know, that was something I didn't really like because Alzheimer's is really scary. Um, and yeah, I don't want my memory to go so quickly. So maybe I need to do some more memory testing for myself. Uh, what I liked about the book, I think I already touched on it uh, in my previous segments. But, you know, I really enjoyed how real uh, Alice's reaction to having Alzheimer's is. I loved how Lisa... Got out, uh, Lisa shared Alice's internal dia uh, dialogue with, you know, possibly ending her life about her reaction to she wanting cancer. And I really also like how real her relationships with, especially her husband and her daughter, Lydia, which she had kind of the um, not great relationship, but got better through the book. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, we always say, sometimes people are doing their best, but their best isn't enough. But in this book, it really showed that Sometimes people aren't doing their best and they're doing that intentionally and it's because not everyone's going to put other people first and that's just how life is and it sucks. Um, so yeah, I really like that about the book even though overall it made me kind of sad that people can think like that because I think we're all an idealist when it comes to like if we got sick or if our partner got sick or if someone in our family got sick, that will always be there for them but sometimes just that's just not the case and it kind of sucks.
this book on Goodreads got a review of 4.31 stars, which is pretty high for Goodreads. I think if anything's over 4 on average, it is going to be a solid read. So it's no surprise that I gave it a 5 out of 5. So first, the bad reviews is that people thought the movie was better, which speaks volumes for how great Julianne Moore and Alec Baldwin and the rest of the cast did. Because I watched the movie a few years ago and it was a great movie. And the book was great, but the movie was awesome. So those were like really only the bad reviews. Um, the other bad reviews, which I don't agree with, was that they felt the plot was hard to follow, um, which is stupid. Sorry, people who did that bad review, because that's the point. The book is told from Alice's point of view, and she's experiencing the early onset Alzheimer's. So it makes sense that the plot is hard to follow because it's supposed to make you feel how she feels and what she's experiencing. Good reviews, I feel you don't really have to share because I kind of talked about it already. People thought uh, Elisa did an amazing job sharing the highs and lows of Alzheimer's. They thought she really showed what it's like, the internal dialogue that people suffer through. And yeah, so I don't know. I don't need to repeat any of the good reviews because I kind of said it. It's a great book and I think you should really read it. Why I think you should read this book. So number one reason is if you want to learn more about Alzheimer's, or have someone in your life that has Alzheimer's, this is a really great book from a first person's perspective and inside the mind and musings of someone that's suffering from early onset Alzheimer's. Um, also, again, I think it's always worth reading a book because there's a movie adaptation. So if you haven't read the movie, watched the movie yet, read this book first, or if you have watched the movie, then read this book. Either way, they're both great things to watch and to read. Now I'll share what this book made me feel as always. One of my favorite things to ask people about a book is how it made them feel because if you ask me in a month, in a year, in five years, the characters or the plot of the book, I probably won't really remember, but one thing I'll remember is how it made me feel. So how this book, Still Alice by Lisa Genova, made me feel is it made me feel appreciative. And it made me feel appreciative because as I said earlier, one of the common themes is that life is short, you not only is life short, but things can change just like that. And you never know what could come hit you. It could be a disease, it could be an accident. Um, it might be something that doesn't even happen to you, but it happens to a loved one. So it really made me feel appreciative of what I currently have, and also having a community as well to lean on. That wraps up my book review. If you've read this book, Still Alice, um, leave your comments down below about what you thought about this book. I'd love to hear it. And if you want to join me for my next book, I am reading uh, The Startup by Tamima Anam. And so far, it seems kind of like a rom-com set in like a tech industry. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I'll leave a review for you uh, probably in the next few days or next week. All right. Bye, guys.